I'm Sue Kerr, and I'm the founder of the Pittsburgh Tote Bag Project. And we're here today in our office, which is helmed by my CRV and our little table. What we do basically is collect tote bags that we then pass on to the food bank. And they're distributed to 300 or so pantries in 12 counties. And the reason is that it makes it easier for people to carry groceries. It's about access. It makes it a little more dignified to use the food pantry if you're using the same kinds of bags everybody else is. It reduces their dependency on disposable bags and it frees up money. So every bag that we donate is three or four bags they don't have to buy. And that's money that could be spent on food. Well, in 2009, I was at a food distribution at the food bank itself in Duquesne. Um, I was, I'm a social worker and I had some clients there. I was observing what they were doing and I was live tweeting because I wanted to give people a sense of what life was like. That was right at the height of the um, Great Recession. I'm watching people come out of the building and I see that they have dozens of small orangish, those thin little bags filled with produce. And, and distribution is an average of 30 to 40 pounds. They also have paper shopping bags that are great for clothes, but not so good for big heads of lettuce and celery and everything. So people are coming out and one gentleman's bag ripped open, a head of cabbage rolled down the hill. It's become an infamous founding story now. <laughs> he went after his head of cabbage because that was several meals. And some folks came out and got him all sewn up with some new bags. And he had even more bags as he left. And it, the thought just came to me because I thought at that time the, food, the, bank, the bags were donated. I didn't realize that they actually were purchased. So it, I thought, well, instead of donating plastic bags, why don't we donate reusable bags? I knew I had a lot of extras at home as my partner often tells me. <laughs> I needed to move them on. So I live tweeted that and unknown to me, um, on the other end of Twitter was um, someone from the Pittsburgh Foundation who was paying attention to what I was writing about and tweeted back that he would send me a couple tote bags the next day or so at work, which he did, and that was how the tote bag project got its start. So, so, tell me so we've been doing this for 19 months and the response has just been incredible. We're all volunteer. Our budget is less than $2,000 that we've just raised from donations that people give us literally handing me $5 here, $10 there. And we've collected over 22,000 bags, which just I would never have dreamed of when we started. Our first couple months we collected 300 and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> so um, I guess a couple things that have been the most interesting to me have been who's stepped forward to become a partner. You know, we certainly partner with the hunger organizations and they've been very supportive and that's been great. But the environmental community has really jumped on this. And Pennsylvania Resources Council, Construction Junction, Pittsburgh Center for Creative Reuse, just pretty much everyone in Pittsburgh that's working on some sort of environmental issue has become involved in some, some level. Either they're collecting bags, they're doing a drive, they're promoting it, they're just simply lending their support. The crafting community, we've discovered that we're very crafty. The cloth here for this table is actually made from repurposed tote bags. It's sort of a quilt-like pattern. And these are all bags that were donated that we say needed a new use. So a cra local crafter, Lynn, took them apart and made a table covering for us, which is really nice when we go out to events. So we can promote reuse. We can promote the concept because it gets people coming over saying, wow, what is this? And we can also start to explore how do we use tote bags? Because we're starting to see the first generation of tote bags wear out and hit the landfills. It's a new material, so to speak, and we have to find ways to use it. And it's a little bit of a challenge. So that's an interesting avenue for us as well, is looking at reusing tote bags, not just passing them on to the food banks. Each month, we have a different theme. We've done um, Heart Healthy Month, we've done Summer Hunger, we've done Hunger Action Month, we did a Veterans Drive, just different kinds of topics that relate to what's happening in real life. So this year for the holidays, we decided to focus on ethnic foods. Pittsburgh is a community that is just built on cultural traditions and a lot of them center around food. So we wanted to, uh, to build on that, I guess, and take a look at what's happening at some of the food pantries where Many of the participants are actually refugees and immigrants to Pittsburgh and are using our food pantries as they get their family settled and situated. And there are so few stories that are positive about members of those communities. And when I discovered that they're using the tote bags like no one's mother, I mean, just, that, I didn't really say that right, but 
they're using the tote bags just in a way that we wish we could learn and because it's just part of their cultural ethics and I wanted to do something to give back so we thought that an ethnic food drive would be an interesting play on the holidays and also raise awareness about the kinds of things that can be donated beyond your typical items that people are familiar with. So we're inviting the public to um, basically collect ethnic foods in tote bags and donate them and then we will pass them on to the food bank so they can get out to families so that everybody can celebrate the holidays with their own ethnic traditions. And it's, it, we like to say, you know, we're celebrating multiculturalism with the gift of food. We're all volunteers, so we certainly need volunteers. And the most important thing what you can do for us is organize a tote bag drive. That is responsible for 25% of our donations. It's just like a food drive. It could be done at work, at your faith community, at school, with your youth group. You simply ask people to bring in donations, collect them, call us, we'll pick them up. The beauty of that kind of drive is that people don't have to buy something. Some of these totes here are new, but a lot of them are gently used, just extra ones that people picked up or received. So it's a nice project because you're not asking people to spend money, and not everybody has the money to spend. Of course, if they want to, they can. That's, that's nice as well. So volunteering to organize a drive is great. Volunteering to participate in the project, become a volunteer to tote transport, pick up totes from our donation spots, help us organize, get connections with people, other people who might want to do drives, work on social media, um, and then we need crafters. We need people who are willing to take these tote bags and make new things out of them. And then we can in turn sell those things to raise money for the project. So if you're a crafty person, we can certainly put your skills to good use, either making tote bags or making other kinds of things from tote bags. And of course, you know, you can visit our website for more information on how to get involved. Our website is www.tote the number four, pgh.com. We're on Facebook, Tote for PGH also. We're on Twitter, Tote for PGH. And we're on Pinterest, Tote for PGH. And if you check our website out, you'll see that we're also on other forms of social media, but that's our three main forms of communicating. Um, you can email us at toteforpgh at gmail.com. 